Hello, friends. This is E. Giuliano. I am here coming to you on a Wednesday, 9th, right, the 9th of February, 2022. This is for the pirates of Pirate Chain. Arr, let us take a look at some price charts for Pirate Chain. I'm here to do a dedicated video for the Pirate Chain price chart. We'll check the BTC pair. We'll check the USDT pair. And we'll talk shock. That's right. Let's get right into it. I will share the screen. When I talk about uh, prices, we talk about waves. Shock is also producing waves. Now, where are we here? We pumped up even today more to 2,500 Satoshi levels for the BTC pair and into the above the dollars into near the dollar 20 mark here currently for the USDT pair as BTC sits at around 44 and a half uh, thousand there on the USD pair. Interestingly, we're going to start with the, the BTC price, but if you of R, if you if you didn't see the the weekly roundup video I did on the portion for Pirate Chain, I'll get into it when we look at the weekly chart, but um, it looks like we are in a very significant potential zone here. And on the monthly, well, what have we got? Okay, on the monthly, we've got this massive move of price here where we're, we, we made a huge impulse up and now we are making a correction down. That's the guess here. This, is, this can't be anything but an impulse here. It's, I, maybe it's an A wave and then we're having a B wave and we'll have a C wave. Or maybe it's a one wave. I don't see any anything before that that would count as the, uh, well, yeah, it's a one wave. I mean, whatever. It's either a one wave, a three wave, five wave, an A wave, a C wave. We're going to bet here that we're in a, a, a significant one wave, but it doesn't even matter. The point being is we had this massive move up and now this massive move down. The massive move down has taken so much more time nine, 10 times more of the time than it did to go up. And uh, literally, like when we count monthly candles here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're currently in an up candle, but considering that this up candle was also partly a down candle during that month, we started the decline. So it was uh, already within this first candle that we were declining. Now, the idea that I want to bring out here is an idea of a zigzag in terms of corrections. Some sort of zigzag is happening here, okay? That's a common corrective pattern. And uh, what I would like to show here is some measurements around the pattern. Where are we right now? We've retraced a significant portion. Let's consider it. We'll look more on the weekly price chart, um, but we've We've nearly fully retraced, but the important thing is we're making a higher low currently. Okay. Negatives on the monthly chart is that we've we've pushed down below the 20 month moving average. We rejected here with an intermediate candle. Um, but it looks like we could be rounding here to push back towards this 20 month moving average. And you know, if it stays around here for two, one, two months more, I mean. That's fine, but it provides this bottoming zone. Okay, that's possible. The other option is it gets gotten rejected here and it might even come up and touch again and then get further rejected down. That's the that's the bearish scenario, okay? Uh, my guess though, if I have to give a guess and make a bet is that this is, this is accumulatory on a massive scale in the sense that there was a huge, like before that there was an accumulation then a huge markup. And then this massive distribution and it was painful if you're watching and you were getting in around here i mean god bless you and if you're still watching today my heart goes out to you i appreciate you very much and i'm so glad you can be here at this time here where you know what i i, I was hoping it would be here i was hoping it would be here uh, it's turning like it could be here and the sad part is that it's nothing is guaranteed okay it could not it might be even going lower than this but Again, betting wise, in my sense, none of this is financial advice, but this is a good chance for bottoming. And what it means is that there is a significant sense of accumulation here. I mean, it's not as significant as if it had only retraced 
uh, you know, or or even 78.6 percent, but it went beyond 80 percent on the monthly frame. If we're going line to line like that, uh, pin to pin, but in that sense, okay, we will take a look here at the line chart just because I think overall, um, just wanting to confirm this type of zigzag move, and um, it's it. It's even, it might even be cleaner on the USDT chart, of course. Um, okay. So that's basically the idea. We're working with a correction that could be coming to an end. And in which case, uh, when, we're, when we're looking, you know, closing to closing retracements. Yeah, like we're giving it a, a decent 88.6 retracement. That's a solid turnaround zone for showing accumulation and also the end of a, 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 a full cycle here. And now we can go for something next. What's next? I don't know. Uh, if it's a continuation of this whole move, well, okay, possibly, but it's not as bullish or trending as if it had re bounced here at 61.8% and gone higher. So I'm gonna say this is done and we're looking for some sort of accumulation now. We're gonna accumulate and then go higher. Uh, that's the general sense I'm getting. Now, having said that, what does the accumulation look like? Maybe it's only a month or two, and then it goes. Uh, in fact, if we start talking about trend lines and breaking trend lines, it will have to happen within a certain amount of time. So we can look at that too. We'll take a look on the weekly chart for time and, and trend line stuff, because the monthly can, can be a little bit too simple sometimes if we're going to look at those. So uh, especially with this little data, we just have a move up and a move down. Mm, let's look for um, this is potential zigzagging here and just say, okay, if we're going from this level to this level, uh, we've made more than a one-to-one, -one, okay? But uh, now we're back above that level there. So let's see, maybe it can hold, maybe not, whatever. It's just, it's around that zone where it could have completed and this thing is done and we're ready to move on to the next stage. Okay, that's the the main idea. And we're going to move into the weekly price chart now. Um, actually, let me pull up. What I'm going to do is load the, the chart that I had already set up there. Well, that's the CoinX. So R, that was just CoinX. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, no, that was only for CoinX. So I didn't actually set it up for this, which is fine. One thing I wanted to note here on the weekly is that we are breaking out of this downtrending resistance formed from back here in um, August, September. So that's significant. It's significant. We have come to that time. Okay. We are reaching towards the 20 week moving average. We are back within this horizontal zone, which you'll see is a significant zone. It's, it's basically the 88.6 zone of retracement on a Fibonacci level. I, I believe maybe that I'm getting confused with the CoinX chart. No, it is. It's roughly, well, actually it's, yeah, it's not that zone. Now. That's the CoinX chart where we start, uh, sorry, CoinX, USDT, sorry. That's the USDT chart uh, where we start looking at that. Anyway, okay. So a, a great bounce off 88.6 level for retracement. And what I'd like to watch now is to say, look, we are pushing already into these levels here. That's great. There is an opportunity now to reclaim at least this horizontal uh, channel here that we have. So if even if it comes back down, like I'm imagining we're going to be touching here if we haven't already with a wick, and we're going to come back down, it's possible, okay. But if we can reclaim and hold this level, that's huge because this part here is below and now we're starting to accumulate. Maybe we make moves up and down, whatever, and then we're ready to go at some point. Maybe it's going to happen faster than that. Maybe it's going to take longer, but my guess is, because see, here's the thing, it, it all depends on those that 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 shock wave system. Mm. You know, with, when you look at Bitcoin, you look at the the you look at the um, the MACD and the RSI. We're going to look at that on the daily. That gives us a better sense right now of that whole shock wave. Um, but uh, I'll get into that in just a second. Just the idea is that the sh the the shock is in this case, in terms of a market, a price market, I'm gonna say in, on, one, on one hand, in one sense, the shock is some sort of information uh, that causes behavior. And it's either a buying or selling behavior. And generally it's a buying behavior. 
because when we look at the the indicators, you know, like I'm specifically focusing MACD, it's usually this like big move up. But then after the shock, after the first shock, there are always further shocks uh, to come. But you know, the most violent one is really that that there's this there's this point after accumulation where there's this violent shock of a move. Uh, this is all relative. It could just be you know before before the current time in the before times, you know, the shocks were here. Before times, the shocks were here, most likely. And it's not just information shocks, but a lot of time it is information shocks. You know, you're getting these kinds of shock movements um, and then after effects. And basically at this point, we've gotten, we've gotten this huge shock and the after effects and it's quieting down, it's quieting down. So it might last a little while before it goes up. But generally when you're done a, a corrective move, it should retrace significantly regardless. So we are really looking for a move to a 5,000 Satoshi's level really, because something here to a 3,000 is not enough because on one hand it is, um, it's giving us this zigzag, right? If like, this is the idea, not, this is not guaranteed that we're done the zigzag, but if we're done the zigzag here at this point here, okay, then we should be breaking this type of line here, this, you know, here, let me just give you a little bit of an idea of some of this. Let's say we're going ABC like this. Um, and let's just get rid of that wave. So let's say we have this ABC, right? Then the trend line that's formed from a zero to B line um, should be broken, should be broken, uh, should be retraced in less time than it took. Like we need to be getting back up here to a 7,000 level. So I don't know if that's how it's gonna work. Um, maybe this is because we've completed a full cycle in that in on one level like on a on a on a smaller degree we've completed a full cycle here and so now we're going to the energy is going to figure itself out until it's ready to go again and what that is like what what is it what is this impulse here that creates the pop and then the further movement up until it stops See, one thing we want to be aware now, you're watching this video here, so that's huge. Like anywhere here that you're accumulating probably is good. Maybe it's going to go down further though. That's the thing, right? Maybe it's going to do one of those and then it's going to go up. Like it really could, it really could. Um, however, what's going on? If that's the case, like that, that means that things are really slow for another, for the rest of this year, you know, it would really have to be slow for the price to come down here. And so that that is like, it's possible, but it currently doesn't feel like it, obviously. Um, now, in, in one sense here on the weekly, uh, where do I wanna go with this? You know, we, if we're turning around, I, I'm, the sense I'm getting is, when, when we look at the daily, you know, um, we're just turning back into positive territory. I don't, I think there's too much inertia to go from here to here, all the way back up to here. You know, there's gonna be some sort of movement slowly back to this zero level. And that's going to be also seen here through the histograms. Maybe they're not gonna be as big. There's a chance that pirate chain and, 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 and uh, privacy focused uh, coins will will not against BTC at least they will not and maybe this will play true for for altcoins in general maybe they're not going to shine super hard yet uh, until some point later when then it's time to go when I, when the energy comes in for let for privacy coins until then it might be a really nice accumulus accumulation time and whether or not we've found the exact bottom is yet to be seen, but there's really good chance that we have found something very significant here. And we are currently looking to just claim this area here. If we can claim this zone here, even if it goes for two, three, four weeks here, that's great. But 
when we look at it even closer on a daily, we start to see a lot of potential here. We're, we're right at this Ichimoku cloud type of level. We, we're breaking out of the Bollinger Band. Um, we made this, this, again, just a fractal of what this whole chart was, was this, this move, strong move up and the slow move down. Uh, you know, just if we retrace it, it's also that considerable 88.6 level that it likes to move from. Um, so, you know, there is just something to be said about this fractal right here. I feel like it's a nice representation of what's going on generally. Now, is it gonna do one of these moves here on the bigger fractal chart? Wow, that would be huge. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm gonna say, I don't, just not getting the thought that it will, but you know, you never know. Now, what are, I think we're gonna work our way back out to the weekly and then to the monthly, and then we'll go to the USDT pair. So what are we looking at here? Okay, we're looking just at the line chart. Um, we can pull up the candles. I don't know if we really need the candles right now. Not on the daily, I don't think. Um, so what's there a couple things to look at here? Firstly, if you're watching this because the price is pumping and you're wondering if you'd get in right now or whatever, um, you know, yeah, the, on, the, on, this, on this RSI, it could totally go into overbought and chop around a little bit um, and before coming down. So yeah, you could buy, uh, but my sense is like, wait until it cools down a bit because it is finding significant resistance levels. Firstly, it's the, we're under the cloud and we're just touching that cloud now getting into it. My, but I'm gonna give you a, a reason why we might be going higher yet, okay? Um, one of the reasons is it, the price just might be targeting this 200 day moving average. Why not? We've already gone over the 20. We're breaking out of this, uh, out of these Bollinger bands that have uh, are narrow enough. And it's looking like it could impulse. Maybe, you know, it's going to keep impulsing here and then come down. That means that it's also ranging for this price range here, which leaves us around the zone. It doesn't have to touch the 200 exactly, but it's also bringing us to the top of the Ichimoku. And then from there, when a move pumps up, we know that it comes down. So you could even see it come down back to this level. Imagine some sort, and I'm, please don't, I'm, I'm not saying this is gonna happen, but you know, horribly enough, it might even come back down to these types of levels here around 2000 Satoshis, where it pops up here to this level, 3000, 3500, 3800. Uh, but even if it gets up to this like 3800 level, it could come down to an 88.6, even if it has to, if it's just, if because maybe we're not ready for a bigger impulse. You know, if it's a bigger impulse, maybe, yeah, we get to 61.8 and then we go higher and go even higher. But if it's just if it's just a move like this, where it's making one impulse up and a, one correction down uh, and then not relating necessarily to a bigger impulse uh, that it's a part of, then here, maybe we're going to make a move up and then make a move down. And that that's great. That's good. That's fine. And it might chop. Who knows what's going to happen after that? Okay. Another option though, is we only make it to the 50% here, this type of level here, okay? Which is relating to this. Now that 50%, what is that? That's just, that's random. It's from here to here. So we're not saying that, but if you look at it, the fact that it is 50% is interesting that from here to here, 50% is here. And what that relates to is this type of support resistance level. This price, this price, this price, this price action. I mean, this one, you know, you have that, that, which means like on another level, it did find resistance, uh, sorry, support. And then it did find resistance there. Um, I know it's not perfect on the line, but you notice like here, here, and here, here, also here, here, and here, here, and this resistance here. So, um, and then we have this one here. So we are coming already to a strong resistance. It's got the cloud. It's got that previous level of price we were monitoring. Um, but at the same time, there is that sense that it could push through and try and, you know, work through here. Maybe it'll, it's just a wick. Maybe it does get up here. Now, here's the beauty here. Look, already we're here. That's what is really exciting about this potential move. Whatever is happening here, even if it fizzles here, we are coming to a point where ever more the Ichimoku cloud is giving us an opportunity that we can get above it. And maybe it's not now that we come to the 200 period moving average, 200, which is significant, it's 200 day moving average, but, but we're on the below side, uh, but it's, it's a significant average. Uh, maybe we come below and now and go to the Ichimoku cloud and get support there. 
um, that would be huge because then maybe we're getting that next pump that we need because ultimately what we would need is like a nice impulse where we're getting something good like that now when these this sucker impulse it might look more like that that's that's even more narrow but we might not need to, that for this time because there is more awareness, there is more participation possibly. So in that sense, it might be more of a of a of a constructed move, uh, more co more complex, I should say, more of a complex impulse than the previous big one here. Um, however, more is a relative term. My sense is just like any crypto pump, but uh, in this sense, these pumps on pirate chain are you know anytime you get an impulsive move it's pretty strong in that direction when it's going up. Any impulsive move up seems to be very sharp. So um, in many words, all I wanted to say is maybe we go up now and get down and, and try and hold one of these zones here, uh, which confluences with this Ichimoku cloud that we're looking to try and get above. But even if it's not now, even if it first goes down and then look by this time, by this time here in March, we're looking at a much more narrow cloud. We're looking at a cloud who's, who's who's gonna be around the 3000 level, meaning you get above it once you're above 3000. And already that's a significant support resistance level. So anyway, bottom line, this is such a huge level to get above and stay above. Um, and because also what it allows is, is, is that makes a potential here for more accumulation. And once that happens, then, 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 then what you have, what we have here is this right here becomes this kind of deviation of, of, of the, the price. And then we're back up here and we're making some sort of, um, some sort of accumulation move and then boom, it just shoots up. That's possible. That's definitely possible. And by then you're getting a, a 200 period moving average that's starting to lose its, its downward slope. And so here you go, maybe around some time like this, uh, maybe you pop above it though, and then you hold it. Uh, and then you're really using this level as some support. I don't know, and now we're just speculating a little bit too much, but I think what, what is coming clear is that we're, oops, is that we are getting very close to some uh, confluence of indicators and confluence of, uh, you know, this moving average 200 period, which, uh, you know, price wise, I mean, sorry, time wise, we're looking at this zone here uh, as a, a nice, a next nice move. So anyway, whatever you're doing down here, it's good. Even if you're at the top of this level, remember it's still the bottom of everything above. So that's pretty cool too. Um, having said that, yeah, watch for any, any, you know, pulling back or whatever it's possible. Um, Having said that, maybe it's time that we're just going to shoot up into here and we won't be below this cloud uh, again for a lot of time. You know, the cloud will probably have to have to flip into a bullish looking cloud. That's the other thing is at some point here, um, this, if the price keeps moving up or it keeps staying bullish, then we get this moving up. We get this kind of moving down. So at some point they flip as well. And if it flips bullish where we get a green cloud and the price is like above it and stuff, that's really even better. Like we're, we're getting there. That's, that's my sense is that overall, this is what, what is most likely gonna take place because in one sense, I think pirate chain has been accumulated over time. And this is a beautiful view of, of like the next degree of fractal that we're working with previously. They were like this, you know, and and now uh, now they're so much bigger. Now let's look at, and 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 you know even before that there was big action relative to this action. So whatever, but you know look at something like this. It makes its move up, okay, and then it takes its time to wind down, and then finally it can gets up, and then boom, it goes up again pretty nicely. So that's you know, we could be at one of those times. Then here's another example in this one. It did have that, you know, each time, oh, wow, we're finding nice fractal action here. This is the only one where it really just jumped right up above, but even then you can consider this, that deviation. Okay, so here, what am I saying? I'm getting ahead of myself. We have again that, let's use the box so that it reminds you visually. Okay, we have that level where above that, oops, above that is, is that price. 
that choppy zone of price and it gets above it. But here each time, maybe actually what we should be doing is, oops, is this. Maybe it's something that's more like that, right? Where the price comes down, uh, it finds some sort of support resistance levels, and then it dumps below, comes back above, finds it as a support and goes above and keeps going higher. Um, here again, something like this, where the price came down, it, it works its way down into here, jumps up above, comes back down. It was a supportive zone. So like it's these zones of price where it, it deviates below. This is beautiful. I think we're, we might be uh, getting into one of those currently. In this one, it never really came back down and held it, but you know, we could also consider that um, you know, all of this price was, was that. Uh, there and it, and it was just it was even a stronger move because it was getting ready for the big daddy you know it was a bigger move that was just preparing for wow like when you look at that that just reminds me of uh, of one of those fractal videos you know here it is again here we are looking at it again and what did we see the last time we saw some price come down after it went up it came down it went down into some region, stayed there, came up above it, and then it didn't come back down into that region again before it went higher. And maybe it didn't make the highest of the highs and it came back down. And you know, like, is that what we're gonna see? That would be great. You know why? This is an RBTC price chart. If you can form one of these type of fractals uh, on this degree, at this level, I don't want to make it the same. Uh, you know, if you're doing it at this level, that's huge because the BTC price we're 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 recognizing is over time, you know, 2022, 20, 23, 24, 25, oops, is likely to be increasing over time. Um, and so therefore, if Pyrochain is finding that fractal here, that's huge. That's a, a great way to do it. And then who knows in the future what that means, but Anyway, that's some hopium for us. I don't want to be too much of a hopium because you know I want to remind of other price charts. You know, we looked at Litecoin on that weekly roundup, and over a long time, it's just it's it finds its lows and lower lows and lower lows. So these are real realities. But anyway, on this daily price chart, we're looking to get above Ichimoku Cloud 200 period average and then hold it. That's when you really know because you can already see here. Even then, that's still just this zone here, which is such a nice zone. Uh, so even then, you know, no rush. You don't really need to rush. Just watch things come up and down if you want. Uh, that's the, the one thing I wanted to say. However, you know, if you do want to get in here, just recognize if it does come down, ultimately, it's still such a beautiful zone. The likely, nothing guaranteed, but the likelihood of getting up and over is closer and closer uh, as we go, for sure. Yeah, because look, Here's, here's where we get into the shocks and the, the information shocks. And it's more just in, more than information shocks. It's also, you know, um, crowd crowd dynamics shocks. All of a sudden, this the crowd gets shocked. And the crowd that would participate in an RBTC market gets shocked. And um, in a sense that it, then it just it jumps right in, it piles in, and it pushes so high. And then there's, it's represented very well in, in, in these kind of uh, MACD waves. Now, with, if you look at Bitcoin, there's it's much more of a, a different type of a shock dynamic. Okay, The dynamic of altcoin shocks seems to be a very fast, big shock, and then the dissipation, and it dissipates, and it dissipates, and then a shock and a dissipation. Uh, now, there's smaller shocks within, but that's... And, and, and just because we found the lowest of the shock here, um, in fact, the lowest of the prices is here. So um, it... it it's it's a it's a different representation of the energy that's in here. The price action is another representation of the energy, and of course, the price action is primary because that's really what it is. It's the buying and selling of the, uh, and that that equates to the price. Um, so, okay. So, what I wanted to show is just this general sense of shockwaves here. We got the zero line, and it shocks up, and then comes down, and then it it finds its its new norm, and then there are, are more shocks. So it's basically this idea, there's this pressure that increases and you have this peak of pressure and then it returns and it even goes negative uh, over time. So that's the kind of idea there. And when we look at shock waves, 
We think about things like shock waves carrying energy. Okay. Um, these are the waves after the, you know, it's just a, a continuation of that energy and it propagates through a medium. In this case, it's through price action and the price action there, we, we measure it and get things like a moving average convergence divergence, MACD. Yeah, and it, and it's, it has to do with the change in, in pressure or temperature. Um, yeah. So there you go. And we use words like market is getting heated, market's cooling off, that kind of stuff too. So it's quite interesting. I just find it fascinating that when we can connect to the, the, the uh, you know, natural systems, we can connect to natural systems and, and see the, the, the similarities. And then that way we can trust, we can trust in the, in the, in the, uh, in the activity, in the, in the price chart, you know, for something like power chain, we, we see fundamentals, we see privacy, um, zero knowledge, enforced privacy, ease of use, that kind of thing going forward, looking for ability to swap it atomically. That is really the next layer of potential for the next degree of potential for pirate chain use case, just in my humble opinion. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> having said that, the, the one that I want to see, this is one, this is a shock without you uh, using a spring. I thought that was interesting. The, the spring mm, it brings us a wave. This is with no dampening and you notice it just, it keeps going and going and going and saying evenness. This is one where there's a dampening and it's like the energy is not continuous like here, like you're in a vacuum in outer space type of thing. There is friction and there is stuff that, that gravity, whatever, there is a for, there are forces that uh, if for price charts um, may, you know, make, and that usually has to do with supply demand type of forces and, and momentum and, 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 and the emotions that are involved with confidence and, and fear that come along with it you know the spring it, it has it's like it's wound up it shoots it has that big shock and then it dissipates and so that's just what i wanted to um yeah that's just kind of what i wanted to to show was was this one this one seems um pretty pretty cool but of course they're all a little bit different different representations of of um, of these phenomena and it's not necessarily the same phenomenon. It's just that, you know, it's just that it, it, it finds an interesting uh, correlation. And same thing, you know, for example, blast waves, um, fluid dynamics, blast waves, and uh, relating to increased pressures and flows um, because large amounts of energy are deposited in very localized volume. Like this just, I don't know, this is just fascinating for me. Mm. Okay, so yeah, and I think this was that other uh, waveform that we had looked at earlier. There's a zero line and there's this, this push of pressure and then it uh, re uh, recedes. So there you go. That's basically the, the idea that, that we're, we're looking at when we're, when we're looking at these, these price charts here. And so when we look at something like this MACD wave, we had that massive pressure, buying pressure, right? And then it dissipated and, and became actually a selling, well, yeah, selling pressure or lack of buying pressure, you know, similar thing. It's there, it's basically a, a, uh, a coordination, you know, the, the, the coordination of buy pressure and sell pressure. So yeah, then it did, but it's also relating to momentum. And so now, as we can see on a daily, we've really narrowed and, and thinned out the momentum. And I, I'm guessing that, that the next, the next move is is up uh, and to you know what does that mean i don't know wh what it's going to look like are we going to have to get above the zero before the big shock comes uh, are we already starting the big shock you know because uh, I'm, I'm thinking maybe it's going to be something more like getting above it coming down and then you get your big shock so what we're going to watch is for when does this this macd signal line get above the zero line which is here and uh, that zero line splits also the positive and negative histograms. So we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're there. That's where we are. I'm excited to be here after many, many months of uh, watching this type of energy and it's been tough. And, and I, I want to be here also just to, to remind us that we don't have to FOMO one way or the other. But having said that, we also wanna recognize good zones of value and when we look at it from longer term perspectives, smaller moves like this 
uh, this becomes a small range when we start looking at huge ranges uh, in comparison, right? Anyway, there you go. So the next level really to watch for, um, we'll take a look on the weekly. So what we'd like to see really is on the Bollinger Band weekly, either we're coming to that end here around the 20 week, 20 week moving average and we're gonna, we're gonna get rejected there, or we're gonna try and find something higher and we'll touch the Bollinger Band up here around 4,300 and maybe that'll even leave a wick up here uh, to a 5,000 level, doesn't matter. It's one or the other. Now, if we are here, then we're and we're re rejecting here. Then what we're looking for is to hold, you know, 2,200, 2,000 satoshis level really as this this kind of horizontal channel zone. And yeah. Also, the one thing I wanted to recognize on the MACD here is that we are moving into that positive momentum territory on the weekly. Like we've been watching this for so long, we've crossed over signal and MACD. So on the weekly, you can expect actually a week or two or maybe three or more. Uh, Maybe usually it's like one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two weeks here, uh, one, two, three, whatever it is uh, of, of positivity. And then it starts going relatively negative momentum. So sometimes that leads to, uh, in that case here, we're already turning over, even though we're in the green, right? So, um, so yeah, so, but we are going into green. So does that mean one green? Does it mean two? Does it mean three? If it's three, then we're definitely trying for this 5,000 level. If it's only one, then we might be done now. And if it's two, um, two weeks, then on this daily chart, yeah, I don't see why we're not gonna tr be touching at least this 4,000 level. And why not be pumping over this, this cloud? Uh, then again, maybe all that positive momentum is gonna be just the energy it takes just to get into this cloud and into the top of the cloud. And then we might come down, uh, we, might, we might be busting up against here. But you know, this, is, this is only a few days. So the next week brings us here, uh, two, three weeks brings us here. Uh, where is that? Here we are, let's just take a look. This is 20 days, 21 days. So this is three weeks here, uh, beginning of March. So yeah, maybe end of February is a nice pumping for, for uh, Firechain. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, either way, we are turning the tide in towards a, um, a new stage. That's just the sense that I'm getting, all right? But anyway, nothing is guaranteed. We still have this supportive uptrending um, slope that we might even come test. But that that case, then we're really not uh, in a positive place because then we're making lower lows than this. And all of that idea about deviating from, uh, from, from the prices above uh, in these little below boxes uh, is not such a, uh, a good idea yet, or at least it's not playing out yet and might be playing out below that. But I, again, that's, that's not the sense that we're getting here, is it? Not from some of those uh, MACD indications. So, uh, you know, on the weekly there, and it allows for the daily to continue with more positive momentum on the MACD. And uh, it also allows for some choppiness here in an overbought territory on the uh, RSI. So what does that mean here for price? Yeah, we, let's challenge this cloud. Let's challenge this 200 day moving average. And either way, no matter what happens, if we can get there, if we can even get into here, then just if we can hold above this, this cloud action, that would be so huge. Anyway, okay, that's exciting. Now, having said that, the 200 day is still on a down slope. Uh, and so that's still not considered uh, a bullish move necessarily. You want the 200 to be up sloping and the price to be above, then that's a, uh, a more a, a bullish scenario. So, you know, even you get rejected, whatever, you'll get above it. And at that point, it'll be flattening and ready to turn up. Uh, and if you're making a nice move up, then, you know, now I'm being exaggerating with that, but if you're making a nice move above it, then you're really getting a chance to uh, to turn faster. Okay, as long as you can hold, as long as you can hold, you gotta hold. Uh, even if you get above it and below it, you're still it's gonna slow down fast. Well, yeah, yeah. When once once it starts picking up the data from here uh, of the move up, it starts slowing down, and and then the further away we get from it, uh, from from you know all of of this. And the further we get away from that, then it it can it can be moving into a more bullish, favorable position. Okay, let's move into the monthly um, and just say 
there's still some ways to go. We're only just here. This is 3,500 Satoshis. So, uh, you know, even this 3,500 Satoshis level here uh, is, is potential resistance considerably uh, because of this 20 month moving average. When we look on the, the weekly, that is not even that high. That's, that's basically this, this kind of price uh, support resistance level, mostly resistance level, but you're basically here, okay? This is the level. So on a monthly, if we can get above this level here, we're, we're actually in a good position. We'll have deviated below the, the, the 20 month moving average, but we'll have gotten back above it relatively quickly. That's good. We'll see though. So anyway, stick around for more. I am not gonna necessarily just do pirate chain only videos like this one all the time, but I will do them on a significant occasions and events for sure. And uh, if you do want any requests or anything like that, pop them into the into the comments. Okay, let's move on to the USDT chart. I've taken so much time on BTC and I hope it's been helpful for you. I hope it's been exciting for you as it is for me, but also just be cautious, you know, um, just as you wanna be cautious when price is doing things like this and you don't wanna, you know, all the way up here, you don't wanna necessarily be buying. You wanna wait for cooling off to prevail. Um, now, having said that, we're at such a, a low stage that, yeah, it's all good for now. But even then, relative cooling off might be what you're waiting for. But then having said that, again, you know, if it's going up here and cooling off, it remains above where we are now. That That's not so fun either. So uh, you know, when you think that you could die here. So it's also a psychological game and it's also a, a money management game and all that. So I'm hoping you're doing well with all of that. And if you're, you know, learning and growing along the way, that's what it's all about. And yeah. So stick around for more. Now let's take a look at the USDT price chart. I think I don't, I, wait, let's just do a couple of price levels here on the weekly. Okay. So we showed that we, we have made basically an 88.6 retracement on the, on the uh, closing prices. Candle wise, we've done even more. We've done even more. So if we're saying that, then what we're doing now is we're just trying to retest and reclaim this 88.6 level. And oh, that's what I meant. Yes, that's why. Okay, so if you've stuck around this long, now you'll see that what I meant is that uh, when we use the wick to wick, uh, this, this, so it's not just the USDT chart and we'll check maybe, I, maybe it's not the USDT chart at all. Uh, this, cause I don't, I don't remember having these, this zone carved out in the USDT chart. So it is this price chart and the 88.6 is here when we're going basically wick to wick. Um, we are, this whole zone is the 88.6 level. So currently this whole zone of price is great for accumulation. As you can see, as you can see all of this here, all of this will turn out over time. This whole thing will turn out likely to have been, I'm sorry if, if this is too early, uh, you know, it will likely turn out to have been a huge level. That's just, that's what it looks like, right? Okay. All right. So yeah, I'm glad I did that retracement. Okay. So there's that retracement. And then what we can look at is a retracement of the move down. So what would some levels be on a retracement of the move down? We're looking at 38.2 uh, out of 10,000 Satoshis. So if this retracement, next retracement is of any value, and it, it confluences with the lower end here, at least of the Ichimoku cloud for now. So, you know, hey, that's a pretty hot move. Who wants some of that? Even if you're in today, you know, that's a nice 250, 280, whatever you wanna call it. Interesting. Okay, none of this financial advice. Now, uh, I just wanna go to, uh, actually, you wanna, I didn't really talk about more just because like that's a fair level to be targeting for now. All right. If we're going to go more, we can look at other levels, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, if we're going to retrace it more than hundred percent, we know that that's beyond this price anyway. So whatever, um, that's pretty cool. If we're going from a closing price basis and we want to retrace it, it's turning out to be quite the, uh, the lengthy video, isn't it? I don't even count it. A 38 is around the, uh, yeah, let's call it 6,500 Satoshi's level, okay? So, and that's an interesting little choppy zone with some clean uh, areas of like support resistance level. So 
yeah, 6,000, let's call it a clean 6,000, okay, just for fun, is the type of level we'd be looking for uh, in a big bounce. But um, yeah, when that bounce comes, it's hard to say. We can, it's, yeah, it's, um, it's interesting though to see these levels, okay, then the 61.8 would be really confluencing with that 10,000 level. So if we're getting a strong bounce, 61.8 level uh, is also relative to the 38.2 when we use that higher uh, price, okay? As the, when we use the wicks. Otherwise it's around a 61.8. So in my opinion, that's a quite a nice zone to look at for sure. Why not? Okay. Um, but at, at minimum, we would expect something like this. Now, if it's not going to get here anytime soon, and soon being like by 2023, then I think either everything is really quiet, like we had said, or something's wrong with fire chain on a big fundamental level. All right. Because, yeah, it's just the price chart itself looks very promising right now. Um, okay. So then, but of course, I'm, I'm biased, so I could be deluding myself. And uh, hopefully I'm not deluding you. Hopefully this is educational, informative, entertaining, and hopefully it's accurate enough. Okay, the other thing I wanted to recognize is what are some possible, um, well, we're gonna do that USDT chart. Okay, good. Okay, so that's it for here for now. Here is that, that zone here that we were looking at on the weekly, around 6,000. Um, and lower end of that is 5,000. And then here is that zone at the uh, 98, 10,000 10, level, okay. All right, cool. All right, out of here for now. I hope that was enjoyable for you on the BTC price chart. We're going to move over to the uh, RUSDT price chart now, okay? Let's get there. Um, all right, now, falling down a little bit, but whatever. The fact that it's doing what I was thinking that it would be doing is, that's, that's the great part right now, because then it doesn't matter exactly what it does. It just it confirms something. I mean, it confirms something. Something is something is 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 accurate enough in what I'm doing, what what it's looking like. So, okay. Because yeah, see, we, like the Ichimoku cloud was was screaming. At, it's like come and touch me. We were already around here. We were breaking above the 20, 20 day moving average right already a few days ago, and and we were at the top of the Bollinger Band. And yesterday's candle was red. And I was thinking, you know, we're just, we're at these price levels, support resistance level, and the Ichimoku cloud is right there. It's like, why aren't we just gonna go there? And it's also the 61.8 level of when we take a retracement from this pin down here in the April 3rd of 2020, or April 4th of 2021, I think it's the third on the daily candle. Third of April, 2021 to the high, uh, we have made a, wow, well, on the daily, We've made a nice 78.6 retracement. This is a nice completion of a pattern. When we look on a higher time frame, we see a nice clean zigzag. This could be done. However, it might not be done because when we look top to bottom A and then B and then C, uh, it's 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 a uh, it's a zigzag that is a, a, the the C is short compared to the A. Like for example. Anyway, we'll do that when we get to the higher time frame. Uh, but the, the counter argument to that is that, um, in fact, if it is only this length, that means its retracement uh, would be uh, from from low to high to low would be actually at the 60, uh, 68 uh, percent level. Anyway, I'll, I'll show you. So, okay. Currently though, we've, we've touched this 78.6 bounced quite hard off of it. So what's happening there? On the USDT price chart, it, it shows these patterns much more cleanly. Now, are we gonna get even into this cloud? I don't know. Uh, a lot of it that is gonna have to do with what happens with Bitcoin price, because it definitely follows BTC price. And then if the RBTC is going up, then it's really gonna be impulsing up. But if BTC price somehow like goes up, but then turns around, uh, yeah, we might get up into here, into here, and then it, it might dump more. But you know, at some point, maybe we are going to be getting over this 200 day and over this cloud. Uh, that would be nice. Having said that, there is room to go to 
there is room to go to this, oops, there is room to go to this 88.6 retracement level. Okay, there is room to go to this 88.6 retracement. And interestingly enough, it is the top of this previous resistance here. It's, it's, it's this top of resistance. It is the previous resistance, the top of this price action here, where now if that turns support, that's still very bullish. So, so no worries um, if it goes up and then comes down further. But then that's less cool because uh, you know th that that ruins this this double bottoming here. Also, however, you know we did have some price action here that was looking like it was double bottoming at a higher low than this. So we looked like we had a higher low here. Um, so things can still dump down further. But the violence of this move up is very promising, and if we can get to a certain level, um, it will show a lot of force, okay? In fact, though, the important level to get above is gonna be this three, uh, no, is it the 250? It's gonna be, when we look on the, the weekly and monthly, it's gonna be around this level here. Uh, and we're, But it doesn't have to be right away. It, it can be soon enough, uh, as long as it's less time than this took to form. In fact, from here, I think is where we're gonna be. Is this the, yeah, it's like this October timeframe. So around this time frame, I believe, but we'll check it, double check again, um, is where the trend line, the C wave would start if we had an A, a B, and now this C. Um, so this, so the C wave would need to be retraced completely. So we'd need to break above this level. We would need to break above that level in less time than, than, than this took to form. So from this time, to this time roughly is, we're gonna take a look. We'll do that on the weekly as well, okay? Uh, it works better with the USDT price chart. I, I said that we might do that on the uh, on the BTC chart, but it'll it'll work and, and, and sound, it'll look better because it just, it seems to follow a bit better uh, uh, structures or at least easier structures to, to understand. That, that's what other people have said as well. And, and it does seem to, to be the case. As we can see already, we're forming a nice higher low potentially here. But yeah, even if we come down to this level here, which would be around like the see that's the crazy thing is it would be around 45, 40 cents level, maybe even down to a, to a yeah like 40 cents. Um, but having said that, I don't think that's happening. But it could. Okay. Um, what what I'm thinking though is when we look at this move. It, it's actually potentially just the fourth wave of a five wave move that starts down here. Maybe it's the fifth wave of a five wave move that starts down here, but no, maybe it's the, the, the fifth wave, the, the fourth wave of a move that starts here and, and started with a one, a two, and now we're in a three and a four. If that's the case, there's potential for the price to be going uh, higher. How much higher? Well, that's hard to say. And we could do that kind of analysis once it looks like we're we're potentially getting there right now let's focus on the turnaround and watching on the daily how it interacts with the ichimoku cloud how it interacts with the 200 day moving average so let's get that there we go i just want to confirm in the settings that we are indeed fib levels based on the log scale we're using the logarithmic scale okay we're coming near to the end of the day uh, interestingly um, so that's cool we are moving to the 10th of February soon. Um, okay, what's next? The other thing that I wanted to share is some timeframes and some other levels, but what, what, I, what we're seeing here is this potential one, two, three, four, and five. Wow, that would be huge. Uh, the only thing though, is that the move from, from below here to, to above here down to where we are now is a bit too much of a retracement to continue. It seems like, well, now I'm no expert, of course, so don't quote me on that. But to go down to a 78.6, uh, usually it's a 61.8. That's a trending, tre trending um, support level at, at, at the at the you know at the lowest. But it's crypto, and in crypto it does take deep retraces, oftentimes. So 78.6 seems to be a great place to bounce in crypto. Uh, yeah, 78.6 bounces, and of course you know you have famous patterns like. I'm, uh, I'm not sure the, which harmonic patterns. I don't know them that well, 
Um, but I believe a Gartley is at a 78.6 and there's others that can be bouncing at 78.6 level. So 78.6 is clearly an important uh, price level for, for uh, pattern relationships. Okay, wave relationships with patterns, especially reversals of you know bigger degree. Okay, now, um, what does this mean? We're gonna take it now to a weekly. I didn't bother going to the four hour. I, you know what, it doesn't matter at this point. We're gonna see in the next day or two. I might come back with a video depending on how things are going, but look, three weeks in a row, we're bullish here. I think we're maximum gonna reach up to here, $1.50 maybe, and we're gonna be touching these levels and re be rejected. That's just the sense that I'm getting. And that's okay. Um, we now having said that, this is just data only from this chart. There's much more data from before this. So in that case, this this Bollinger Band it might not be the, the pure, pure true Bollinger Band for the price action of, of in U.S. dollars of Pirate Chain. But for this exchange and for these purposes, I think there's significance of this resistance level here, and it confluences nicely with the because of these prices and it constantly confluences nicely with the Bollinger Band currently. So, and three green candles. So we'll see what, where this goes uh, in the near nearest of terms. Um, so yeah, if you are, you know, looking to buy, just don't, don't, don't shoot all your ammunition all at once. Right. Especially if you didn't get in over here, especially if you did get in over here, I don't know why you would shoot it now. I, you know, you might as well just wait, see, but then again, if you're already getting in down here, you don't need my advice for anything right now. Um, but yeah, watch this resistance level here on the dollar, um, and 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 don't be surprised if it comes down to forty cents. Really, don't be surprised if we get rejected at this 20, 20 week moving average and come down to forty cents. is is possible. But on a, on a, the beautiful thing here, um, the BTC price chart. Is already into the positive. Here we're not quite in the positive momentum yet, but we've 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 gone through a lot of relatively negative, uh, well, relatively positive in towards uh, this. But we're we're like we're in this big negative momentum territory, and so we are looking to get positive. In my opinion, we are in a good turnaround time. Yeah, we could dump down to forty cents, but no, I, I don't really see that as as the case. I see it getting rejected here, making even making a higher low than this. Like I'll be surprised if we make it below 75 cents or 80 cents. And in fact, the, the at this point, the, the the dollar level just psychologically feels like a fair level. But price-wise, it, it was never really that that level. It's more so the the nine, you know. It, anyway, we can look more closely, but here here it looks more like it's uh, you know around 90 cents or something. Who cares? Now you get my point here at this time. Is that with this momentum going relatively more and more positive towards the the, the positive histogram territory, we might be just um, actually coming down in price after being rejected and, uh, and but then going for that higher low. Whew, this is huge. Okay, so let's do some retracements. Um, firstly, we had an extension here of about 30, 361.8. So that's huge. The fifth wave, I don't think is gonna be much more significant. It, I don't, I, you know. Who knows where it'll go, but um, yeah, can't even be one to one with that. Like that's tough. We you are, either we have to hope that this is not part of a bigger um, impulse, and that somehow this whole move is done, and now we're looking for the next stage of of life and degree for this. Otherwise. Um, you know, I don't see it getting much higher than 10 bucks in this next move. Uh, and next, no, that just doesn't make sense. I, how is that possible? Either that, or we're going to be in a very, what makes more sense is we'll be in a more um, uh, subdivided, extended fifth wave that leads quite higher. And, um, but that will take maybe even years okay, to get there. Uh, but that just, I don't know, that doesn't make sense. Take years in, in all one like uptrending wave, like, not like that, sorry, like that, like just not breaking this for 
how many years? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, like we'd have to be breaking it around here and it would be a sharp break. And we'd be coming back to low levels. Like we're talking from, a, from well, I can't be one-to-one -one with the three. It would have to be longer uh, in my sense. Otherwise it's gonna be shorter. Uh, anyway, now we're price speculating from such a low level and we don't even see what's coming. So I, we don't even know if it's the turnaround yet. So I don't really feel like doing that. We, we could be flat for, for a long time. We could be flat for until 2023. We've already talked about that. So we could come down to this 40 cents and flat and whatever, all these options. Okay, having said that, when we start watching trend lines, we take this, this is a key trend line, okay? The reason being, if we're using the wicks, even if we're using the wicks, okay, boom, we are making an important confirmation. Now, is this weekly candle gonna hold it or are we gonna close below it? Well, in one sense, it, it doesn't matter, but in another, it does because then there's no confirmation. So what we're looking at here is potentially is potentially an ABC pattern here. A, B, and then this probably would be the C level because what's happening now is we're breaking this trend line here. We'll call it a zero to B trend line, breaking that one, pushing up above it. We're doing that, we're breaking it in less time than it took to form, okay? We're doing it in less time than it took to form. As you can see, it's only taken three bars here, whereas it started forming back here. And the reason I'm comfortable and confident with that is we touched price here, we touch price here, we don't really touch price here. Um, and I don't think this is the beginning of the C wave here, uh, but uh, you know, if you wanna argue that, that's fine. We're still three candles. In that case, we would need to be one, two, three, four, five, six here. We'd need to be breaking this level here, $1.60 in less than six candles, which is one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, by the end of February, we'd be need, needing to be a, a above a dollar $1.66. So, hey, that's also possible if this is the, the B wave and it's also possible, sorry, the end of the B wave. And it's also possible, meaning like this, okay? And it's also possible if it's not the end of the B wave. And if in, rather this is the end of the B wave, then it's also even more likely and it doesn't need to be within six candles. It can be, and it's not this level. It would be this level, um, this, which is like 320, 340, that kind of level. I will fairly say it's about 340, okay? So at the $3.40 mark, we would need to be at that level before uh, this amount of time. So let's just pull our time tool. Fib time just gives us a nice clean one-to-one. -one. We'll go from there to, the, well, we'll say we, we went down here and we started coming up here. We'll just be easy about it. And we'll say here, by this point here, by May, the, the week of the 16th, May, 2022, we should be uh, above 340. Otherwise, um, this is not the end of the move and there's more to come. And that's fine, but it just, it just, if we are bouncing here, okay, yes, it's a nice 78.6 bounce, but if we're just using closing prices, which on a weekly, you could argue for closing prices, although in a more truest sense, the price did trade up here. So there is significance there as well. So that's fine. Beautiful confluence 78.6, as well as, nope, nope. As well as, um, here from the bottom of the move uh, is a 61.8. So even if we had like, this is uh, missing some, some action, and if we became a one, two, and a three, and a four, and a five, somehow this whole thing is its own impulse, but part of a bigger impulse. <clears throat> we are at a, a, regardless, anyway, regardless of impulses and corrections, we are from the bottom of the price to the top of the price on a closing basis down to where we bounced is a 61.8 retracement. That's a nice retracement. And we're already pushing into the 50 zone. 
between 50 and 38 to uh, back into that region. So that, that's great. And, and so in that sense, bouncing off the 61.8 is a trending move. Uh, that could mean on a weekly basis, we are, if, if this thing is carrying like from, from the beginning of January is the beginning of this impulse and uh, mid April here, 19th April week is the end of this impulse, then, then we might be having corrected here to the 61.8% as the correction relating to this whole impulse starting here. That move up and down, bouncing at a 61.8, that's a huge move. That means we're, we're heavily likely going higher than this $8 level. And that's great for everyone involved, isn't it? Especially here at a dollar. That's a nice 8X if you would say so. So anyway, we'll see, um, is it relating? Mm, it's hard to say, this looks like its own impulse. You know, it doesn't look like it's subdivided enough to, to contain two of them, if this is a one and a two. So the other option, but then we're not looking at closing prices, uh, is this, see how it goes down, up, down, up, down, and then up, that could be uh, the way and in that case, when we use that from down to up, bang, we are also bouncing around that 61.8. Now, if you wanna be super precise, yeah, we did kind of uh, close below. So maybe that doesn't count, but anyway, let's just keep watching things, I guess, ultimately to just show all these different levels uh, that are relating to these tools that we can pull out. And so, yeah, the, the, the uh, time period here, like this would be the latest in May that it would be doing it. So let's look for April to be uh, a potential month of, of, a, of a high price, March, April. That would, that would be fantastic. Um, and, and the price getting above $3.40. Okay, If we can get above $3.40 in, in, in less time, that is a huge move and that is bullish on the next level. So there you go. Anyway, that also brings us to the top of the Bollinger Band here. Well, no, that's only the 250, so watch out. But um, if that's the case, you know, even just in this move here, uh, you know, we might reject and then go higher again and then find support there and then go higher uh, up to this three, the, the 340 level or wherever we, we're going next. But yeah, that 340 level is the important one to see it, it break. So there you go. Th those are some options. And this is the time frame that we're looking to do it within. Okay, I think that's... Really wanted, I wanted to say, and I just wanted to show you on the monthly what a, a clean zigzag this becomes. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's just a nice down, up, and down, really. Um, and, and if we look, that's why I wanted to show on the monthly, it, it really is, it really is one impulse move, it looks like. So, yeah, it's just, it's just, up and down, and this zigzag down, um, interestingly, okay, here's where I was saying on the on the USDT chart, the relationship on a closing basis of the monthly is, oh, nice, it's already more than one to one. That's great, actually. So why not? But with the, oops, no, that's not what we want. With the candlesticks and the, the wicks, if we extend it, then we're only at 61.8% of, of the A wave. The C wave, the C wave would be 61.8% of the A wave, which in its own way is bullish, is, is very bullish that the C wave would be shorter than the A wave and it would be at the 61.8 level. That's, that's like, uh, uh, yeah, that's a very bullish type of, of zigzag correction in the sense that bullish is up. And if, if it was inverted, then uh, uh, that would be super bearish. If it could only retrace the 61.8 in its zigzag, then it's gonna be trending even lower. Then you're, you're likely going lower than, than um, or at least I should say you're retracing this whole move here probably. But anyway, okay, forget about that. So yeah, that's, that's the idea there is that the, once again, ABC pattern here, the A wave, B wave, C wave, the C wave, would be only 61.8% of the A wave if, if we're using the wicks, right? Of the, the, the price action. Now, on top of that, 
we can relate again this move from the low wick to the top wick. And again, it's at a 61.8%. So I think this confluence is so powerful. I, I don't know, maybe you think differently, of course, but uh, maybe you maybe you think similarly, like just this confluence is uncanny. That's quite solid in my opinion. It means that this price drop from year to year is a certain type of, of well, if you look at it, it was a 50% drop uh, relative to the move up from all the way down here at 10 cents. So that was a move from 10 cents all the way to 17.69 for the pirates, okay? Um, yeah, so there you go. That, 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 that's the next argument for feeling bullish sentiment for pirate chain price. And I, this is such a huge long video now that I didn't even expect, but I just keep going more and more into it. And it's just, it's, it's, yeah, it's really intriguing me. Okay, the other thing is though, yeah, that 40 cents level is still potentially in play just because we're at the 61.8 doesn't mean it's gonna hold it, all right? However, uh, overall, a really nice price action on the USDT price chart. And um, I hope it's ex as much exciting for you as it is for me to see. And this, like, this is some real nice accumulation effect. If we're starting here and then we're here. Now, of course, price-wise, we didn't necessarily start here. There's been price action in time before this, but definitely never up in this level. Um, I don't know. I don't remember the all-time high here. We'll use. I'm using get Orox terminal, and we can quickly use this link here to jump to CoinGecko and see. Um, we'll look at the price chart maximum. Uh, logarithmic yeah and we'll we here's the the btc btc is actually at these previous highs from before not necessarily right there uh, it it but around around there so um that's pretty cool that it's if they can use this as support over here that is that is quite the bullish move that means you're you're accumulating and you're finding your new lows at your old, oldest all time highs. That is phenomenal, beautiful, good stuff. Okay, where are we here? This is, yeah, it went down to lower than, than 2000. And here the highest is roughly around uh, 2,500. So, you know, we're around those ranges. It's like this block of, of chop, this block of chop. You know, this could be considered a deviation here. This, uh, here, let's go in closer. So, so this action here could be considered a deviation where this level here is more of the support resistance level and then the stuff above is this deviation and if we take this all the way over here so i don't know but we want more oh it's because you took us off longer than so if you if oops if if you come over here again you can see it again this potential for the this deviation down below being similar to the deviation above it's like it takes the same kind of boxy territory Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, well, we're gonna have to watch it and that's on the BTC price. That's bullish AF, if you ask me. Let's just hope that it can hold. Yeah, smoke that opium. Next on the USD price, we'd be finding support above the previous all time high of like 23 cents. So even if it goes to uh, of 30 cents. So yeah, there's a potential if it does come back down to that lower price then of course, uh, that would again be that bullishness where it's finding support there. But to find support even higher than that, that's pretty cool. And so to see that we are at um, at a level where, yeah, we had a full market cycle here, okay, and now we're having the next market cycle from uh, really from 20, 2020 in uh, in around March. So that's fair to say. So maybe this this is one impulse move up and now we are making the the wave down and it's you know this started back at one cent so we are even less than 61.8 percent retraced but if we're going to just 
if we're going to just take the action from when was that that was in like january of 2021 so that was just back here you know so on some level you know what i would say yeah it's fair to say that this is a very bullish usd price chart in my humble humble opinion because of all that action that was there and now we're coming back down to this level and you can find support there and, and take off <sighs> huge huge now one thing that i'm a little bit curious about is like the volume levels here is still low even though we're getting this pump up so i, I don't know what that means uh, yeah anyway still not ruling out 40 cents okay still not ruling it out uh, but we're getting just this feeling of a good turnaround Mm. Having said that, once you once you jump out of out of a zone here, out of a downtrending resistance, you might still need to touch it again before you go off. Mm. Having said that, you might not, and then you can go off. Anyway, all right, I think. I think that's about it. I don't really have much else to say. Talked a bit about the time uh, that it would need to show us a strong move to a, at a, a level. We looked at some retracements. We talked a lot of stuff. If you want to do, watch it again, go ahead. If I ramble too much, well, you know, that's just how it is. And other than that, 1 1.5, 1.75x speed. That might be helpful too. Okay, we're not out of the woods yet. Still below this significant moving average on a significant time scale weekly. But I'm excited. And I hope you are too. Pirate chain, price charts against BTC and against USDT are complete for today. And that's about it for me. Once again, me, Giuliano. And if you, uh, hey, if you want to grab yourself a pirate chain, t-shirt we've got some here um, the link will be in the description below if you're still watching much love to you and respect we've got some nice two-sided pirate t-shirts as well we have um, <laughs> this great pirate t-shirt as well all right yeah all right then until next time <clears throat> wishing you very much all the love, peace, and happiness that you can manage. Goodbye.